so welcome to my allotment it's the beginning of December I'm going to take you for a little tour around the allotment and um, to show you what I've been up to and what I'm planning to do um, unfortunately I think I've got something called um, allium leaf miner on my on my leaks which is a little bit of a blow and um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit more that a little bit more about that towards the end um, and what, what you can do and the options that are available to you now if you've not already subscribed to my channel if you could please do so because you'll get lots of helpful hints and tips all throughout the year from my allotment my home garden and also my home kitchen now one of the jobs I've been doing is I've been pruning my trees so that's a job we've actually got quite a lot done over the last few weeks we came up here and spent a good few hours up here and um, tidying up pruning pruning getting ready for next year and um, so really chuffed that we've got those um, trees pruned if you've not already done that then that's a job that you can definitely be getting on with so as we move down so We've started to tidy up the blackberries up there, but we haven't completely finished. But as you can see, my fruit cage area definitely needs a little bit of work. In particular, the cage itself isn't really up to much. In fact, this side's not so bad, but the other side, very, very fully a party. So that's gonna be a lot of work for me during the winter. I'm not exactly sure whether I'm gonna get it all done, but I'm gonna get what I can done. Um, like with most things on the allotment, there's always plenty to be done, even in the winter. So I've tidied up all my um, fruit bushes. So if you've not done things like your black currants and your gooseberries, now's a really good time to do that. Um, I am going to be mulching around these, but I haven't got round to that yet. Again, one job at a time. But at least I've got the pruning done, which is really, really important. So the plants grow healthily next year. My broccoli, which has served me so, so well, I can't believe. I think finally reached its end and I decided to dig it up and clear it ready for next year but honestly it's the best broccoli I've ever had I've never had so much broccoli off of the plants before and um, so they've really really done well but it was a sad time having to dig them up and admit that they probably weren't going to do much more um, so the kale is still really brilliant um, obviously covered because the birds have started to attack it so I've got loads of lovely kale to see me through the winter which is absolutely awesome um, so just need to keep that weed free so the purple sprouting and the brussels they are still not really doing that much the brussels are slowly filling out if, as you can see and my father-in-law suggested putting some um, chicken pellets around them my father-in-law's answer to nearly everything is to put manure or chicken pellets on it and even when sometimes you don't think you should do it he chucks it on his bit and everything seems to go mad so bearing in mind oh, i'd really quite like my own brussels um in december especially for christmas i've put some chicken pellets around them which i've i've still got plenty of those in the in the summer house which i've done so hopefully i'll be getting some brussels for christmas but we'll see as we move down the chard is absolutely fantastic again another crop that sees you through the winter and that just keeps on coming you know you just pick the leaves as and when you need them I've got a nice big bowl full of them at the moment in my fridge um, that I've washed and prepared ready to put in all my meals my garlic and my over and wintering onions are looking quite good so all I need to do is keep those weed free they were completely weed free about a week or two ago and now I see lots of little weeds in here so that's a job that I must do really important that you do try and keep things as weed free as you can they don't have to be perfect um, but less chance of disease and they grow better if you keep those weeds down and I've got more area covered down here so um, last time we still had the dahlias in and we still had the beans in um, now we've cleared the beans and we've cleared the dahlias if you've still got your beans in um, what I do is uh, you don't dig the roots out because they put nitrogen back into the soil so I'll definitely be planting my cabbages or my, any form of brassicas where my beans were because they need lots of nitrogen and it's just a natural way of getting it back in the soil so all I've done is I've just cut them off at the ground pulled out the weeds as best I can because obviously I don't want to pull the roots out and um, to naturally um, put some nutrition back into the soil and I've just covered this area because over the winter I won't be doing anything with this um, I know some people mulch but it's a really really big area to mulch 
with things like mulching and putting the cardboard down if i'm honest i do that in small areas so i've got some areas where i will be putting some cardboard down and putting some mulch over but that's areas where i couldn't put, put great, great big sheets down so i do what practically works better for me and um, round up by my gooseberries and my black currants i'm definitely going to mulch in and around those areas with cardboard and um and some and you know and some manure to keep the weeds down over the winter because it's all a case of just kind of keeping everything as tidy as you can for next year so when you can start planting stuff you haven't then got to get rid of loads of weeds and um, you've kept it down as best you can so you can hit the ground running if you've not got any of this weed suppressant it's really really good stuff um, it's better than using plastic sheeting because it actually lets the water through um, so it keeps the ground lovely and soft underneath as well because it lets the water through so it's a much better way I will put a link in the description if you've not already got this I've bought it and I use it year after year it's really durable and um, so I put it down um, now and then I lift it back up at the spring when I'm ready to start planting so I don't lift it until I've actually got stuff ready to put in the ground and I'm ready to plant um, this bottom part of the allotment is my father-in-law's part he works that himself so as you can see he's starting to do exactly the same he loves to put his manure in sacks to help it rot a little bit better actually which i quite often mean to do and never get round to that bit but i will try and do that and we're actually probably going to work a little bit more as a collaboration on this bottom part next year because he's getting a little bit older and he's struggling a little bit but he does still really really love doing his allotment but if i help him it means he can carry on doing it and carry on enjoying it but when he can't manage it then obviously i can pick up what he can't pick up so I'm hoping that's going to work really well and it's going to keep him feeling happy and young still. So as we move over, as you can hear in the background, we've got people keeping the allotment tidy. We're very lucky here. We have a really good team of volunteers that keep the allotment and the area um, tidy all year round. So we are very, very lucky. We have a very, very positive vibe here. So I'm very fortunate indeed. There's always someone to go and talk to about something if you're not sure in it. And indeed, if you're... Um, on an allotment and you're frightened about approaching people honestly there are people that have allotment year in year out they love sharing that's why i do this youtube channel because i love sharing and helping other people same thing here you know they love helping people especially when they're new so don't be afraid to talk to other allotment holders i'm sure they would help you so as we move up we've got still got loads of parsley here and um, my carrots funny story about my carrots I pretty much dismissed them and thought they were a complete disaster because when I was digging them early on in the season they were really tiny well because I don't like digging things up and, and without giving them a fair go I've left them in and actually the last time I dug some carrots they still weren't the best carrots I've ever had I'm not going to lie but they'd actually really swelled out so if you're in the same position as me and your carrots aren't quite as big as you would hope they were going to be it is still worth leaving them in to see what will happen because at the end of the day what else are you going to do with that space between now and the spring nothing um, so I'm really glad that I just bear with. I've still got some beetroots here which I do actually need to start pulling a few more of those and making some more exciting recipes with. I think I've said to you before I'm not a huge lover of pickled beetroot. I don't hate it but I don't want jars and jars of it so I pick it and I make salads and I roast it and I do all sorts of other things. You can even make brownies with it or little cupcakes so there are lots of options that you can do with your beetroot rather than just pickling it if you're like me. So, and it's nice to have a winter vegetable generally speaking they'll happily sit in the ground provided they've not got oversized and they're smaller they will happily sit out sit in the ground and not go um, and not bolt so but if they're big then they're the ones you must get out because they're the ones that could go over but generally speaking i leave them here and i have some as i need to i've got some strain spring onions which if i'm honest i never do very well with spring onions but there's a few there that hopefully will overwinter and and fill out and they will be they will be worth having um, and my salad is still doing really really well and um, we've not actually had what I call a proper frost as you can see one there is starting to bolt actually um, so things that are forming hearts um, actually I think we have had a little bit of a frost on there I say that we haven't had one but actually that is probably our first bit of frost now the chances are the lettuce probably won't last an awful lot longer. The curly leafed ones, they tend to take a bit more frost. Um, ones like this that form hearts, they don't. But if I'm honest, I've had an amazing crop of salad. So if, if it starts to go now, I really can't complain. So I must start munching on that salad now before the frost completely gets it. Now moving to these leeks. Now, 
everyone gets disease from time to time and you just have to accept it with an allotment you're going to get some winners and losers every single year and you just have to accept that it's part and parcel i've had some fantastic crops in other areas so the fact that i've got a bit of disease on these isn't the end of the world i'm not going to pretend i'm not a little bit frustrated about it but there is a bit of damage limitation that you can do now i'm going to dig a few and i'm going to show you what they look like but i'm also going to talk about what your options are going forward so if you're like me and you've got a little bit of leaf miner, then don't just throw it all away. It all depends on what stage it's got to. Obviously, if they've completely rotted, there's nothing you can do, unfortunately. Um, but mine have actually formed decent leaves. Um, so just dig them out, tidy them up a little bit. So I've got my clippers here. I'm just going to try and show you what I'm doing. So I'm just going to trim the bottom off. I would normally do this up at the pit, but I'm going to just do this to show you. Pull the leaves back. And just take off the damaged leaves is all you can do. So I can see that I've definitely got a little bit of leaf miner because it's all starting to go a little bit split and a bit mushy there. And actually there is a little leaf miner there. So let's have a look if you can see that that is the the pupae that has gone into it so all i'm doing is i'm taking out the outer leaves so although i don't want to eat the outside of this leak because it's got obviously been burrowed into and it's gone a bit icky uh, what i'm doing is i'm taking off the outer leaves so i'm going to chop the top off I'm removing all the outer leaves until I get down to a bit that isn't damaged, basically. So obviously I'll take these home, I'll give them a thorough wash. So as you can see, this isn't as big a leak as I was hoping for, I'm not gonna lie. What we dug out was obviously bigger and we've lost some of the outer leaves, but mine at the moment, if I take off some of the outer leaves, give them a good wash, they're still all perfectly good eating. So what I will have to do, because my concern is they're not gonna, normally I just dig a few each week and I don't rush to eat them. But because they've got this in them, I'm gonna be eating them a little bit quicker if I'm honest. I mean, I could dig them all, chop them up and freeze them. I'm not gonna do that because I actually haven't got that much freezer space to be fair. Um, so you could do that but i'm just going to be eating them a little bit quicker and just accept rather than them lasting me through till february or march i might have finished them off by the end of january a little bit more so if you've got a little bit of leaf miner and it's only if it's not damaged too much you can still eat them now what am i going to do next year or well, what am i going to do next year the temptation is not to grow them i've done a little bit of research on the rhs website now allium leaf miner they say has only been around since about 2002 um, so it's it's a relatively new thing. It's not been going for years and years in this country. So they advise not to plant it in the same area as you would normally plant. Well, I normally do a crop rotation anyway, because some of the pupae and you know they can still they can still they can be in the ground, and they're more likely to attack the crop the following year. So definitely crop rotation. The way that um, allium leaf miner works is that. A fly and it, they say it looks almost like a common fly lands on the plant and it makes incisions into the plant and that's when you first notice some white dots on the plant and they then lay their eggs and then they burrow those eggs then burrow into the leeks and that's what you see there the pupae that's developed and that's that's basically how it works and it can cause what kills the plants isn't that is they start to quite often get a secondary infection and then they rot or they twist if you get it early in the year it's far more damaging if it's later in the year not so much so I'm wondering whether mine came later in the year and that's why mine's not so bad now a little bit of a emphasis on the allium leaf miner on this video but I think feel that a lot of people have been saying they've been getting it and this is probably my worst year that I've ever had with it so if anyone else has got leaf miner I'd like to hear whether you've got it whether it's completely ruined your crop whether you've got any ideas what to do with it so crop rotation is a way to fix it and you can also put EnviroMesh over it
so if you wanted to the only problem i've got is i usually grow so much or if i environmished every single item that needed it um i'd have a whole a lot more covered in environment so me personally i'm just going to rotate it and actually move it a little bit further down so rather than having it just directly next to it and rotating it over there i'm going to stick my leeks a bit further down the allotment because I really want to grow leeks next year because it's, it is a main staple in our house. Now I hope you found this video um, interesting. If you've liked watching it please do give us a like and tell us what you liked most.